Welcome back. To Bronze League Heroes with three times the heroes, a 3v3 on flashback. Let me introduce the southern team in the orange, the Terran player. It is Bob. Babovko. But Bob for short. And we're going to have to shorten his uh, Protoss. Wait, why are they not in the. Jimmy, you know, I don't know how they order these things doesn't really matter at the end of the day. They're all on the same team. They're all on the same side. Let me introduce the purple Protoss player, Stavros. And last but not least, the Terran rounding out the team. It's... Okay. Polko Zyklin. Polko, for short. It appears we're shortening the whole thing, but Team Bob to the south. Not reaching out so far quite yet, still very much on that one base. And a very interesting look at that. Their counterparts to the north. I give you the second of Du Protoss, Hidden Tuna. Team Tuna. And Zenwar, the red Terran player, and finally to the very north with an armory and a starport on the way, Gravito. So, two Terrans and a Protoss on both sides. An asymmetric, not really an asymmetric, but not a fully symmetrical map. Uh, instead one where the air distance is dangerously close to your opponents. Now, will that become relevant? It's a team game. All right, it's a team game. There's already not one, but two Stargates on the way for Hidden Tuna. Looking to show his flying fish earlier than anything. Stavaros is going straight towards the Dark Shrine. We do have starports. Oh, what is in there? That's four Hellions. It's a four Hellion. Looks like somebody got a hold of Malru's TVT build and uh, is looking to apply it in one of the most confusing possible manners. Yeah, we're going to do a Reaper Hellion drop. Is he going to bring some SCVs? No, the SCVs are just there to see him off. Just make sure. It's been a while since I play, uh, since we uh, I played Bronze League Heroes. Thank you very much. But also, since we've seen some, now I'm not sure how recent this is. Well, no more pontificating. The drops are dropping. The action is popping, and the Widow Mines are in the mineral line. All right, and th there's also Widow Mines for the teammate. He scans, but it's already too late. Obliterated the SCVs. Does he have... Oh my god, he went for Armory Widow Mine Drop. How disgusting is that? Meanwhile, Void Ray, the built-in counter. Cannons, not quite in position to block the drop, but the Void Ray is locked on to the Metavac. Looks like it'll take it down, but not before the SCVs and the probes will feel the brunt of the fiery rage that Babovko has inside, or had inside the Metavacs, and now lost both Metavacs, but... All right, War Prism coming in. Stavaros with the Dark Templar. Able to warp in, yes, but there's already some cannons. Of course, four Dark Templar are pretty good against really anything on the ground. Oh my god, the Hellion drives by, tags in the DTs. Unfortunately, I believe they are in range, and just in case you weren't sure, that scan will confirm it. Another scan from Gravito coming in. Uh, the Terrans combining to make sure that there is the visual coverage of those Dark Templar. Meanwhile, another set of drops coming in. The Void Ray, working on the War Prism. The drops trying to speed by, but goes down with all hands. Absolute disaster for Team Bob. Some Stalkers are warped in, but more than equal number of Void Rays will take them down. Team Bob's triple team drop attack has been shut down by Team Tuna. And the Northern players will now rest a little easier knowing their borders are safe. Well, um, now what? Well, Team Tuna has a significant supply advantage overall for what that's worth. Of course, investing in important upgrades like high sec auto tracking and a fleet beacon in order to round things out. We got four more factories on the way as Babovko. Sure, he might not really have the SCV count, but he does have mules, so we know those will get you pretty far. So, with a now going on three base economy, Babovko gonna try to go into the mech army composition. Stavaros has already expanded out to the bottom right corner. 
uh, which is quite a distance from anywhere either team has really explored thus far. A Thor drop! What? <laughs> Gravito with some gravitas here. As uh, it doesn't get too much more dramatic than this. He drops the Thor, smacks his way through. DT's on the way. He couldn't get out. He dropped a mule to repair. He had a... Okay, he had a medevac that could have evacuated the Thor. But he dropped a mule to repair. And it appears he has reminded Babovko that armories exist with that Thor there. Possibly inspired him to Thors himself. So, oh, the Dark Shrine is spotted. The source of... Actually, very few of their troubles. The Stavaros has gotten almost nothing done with those DTs. A couple more Stalkers warped in. Still not enough to deal with the Void Race. We needed another uh, uh, data point on that. Uh, three Stim Marines. How about that? They actually get one of the Void Race. The rest run back. Losing. Well, charges up the Voids. Looking for the Dark Shrine. Now four Marines going to try to Stim down. He knows he can cancel the Prismatic Alignment. Try to turn back. Microwing back, microwing forth, dozens of APM right now. Both these players stretch to the absolute limit as the Dark Shrine now. The shield stripped away. How many probes does Tavaros have left? 15 overall. And that Dark Shrine is taken out. Now, a Dark Sh a Void Raid does cost more. A single Void Raid does cost more than a Dark Shrine. But it's a matter of principle. Okay? Without that Dark Shrine... Even if it costs multiple Void Rays, you can rest assured. The safety and the security of Team Tuna are now in good hands. Well, Team Tuna with quite a, uh, a bulwark at the front. Three bunkers, bunch of supply depots, plenty of turrets. I believe those turrets do indeed have high sec auto tracking. Zenwar has locked it down. I have no idea. All right, there's the scan. The production tab wasn't really designed for this magnitude of players, but Zen War adds on the Fusion Core. As I, you know, I think advanced ballistics aren't even in his vocabulary. Neither is the word vocabulary. But battle cruisers, on the other hand, are in every Bronze League hero's toolkit. They make up the vast majority of the toolkit. Some might say they're a tool, but no, I say they're a kit. Didn't really know where I was going to land that. But let's tactical jump our way into a segue so we can see how the battle cruisers end up and whether or not they're going to be a game-ending maneuver. Wait, he only has one starboard, so probably not. The drops will continue until morale improves. Um, could take a while. Cyclones, by the way, from Poco. The double medevac, double cyclone. Or was it just that the marines didn't make it? Now we got some Thors. It appears both sides being inspired somewhat by their counterparts. You know, when the blind lead the blind. Hopefully at least someone can see well enough to send in the replay to Bronze League Heroes, as the saying goes. Bob with plenty of Thors now. Not to be outdone. Gravito may have had the first one, but Bob popularized it. Meanwhile, Void Ray is coming in, not allowing his Protoss counterpart any rest here. Stavaros is mostly located in the bottom right corner. There are scans for... I have no idea where those scans are. Here come the Thors from Bob in high impact mode, which is nice against everything pretty much except Mutilus. Unfortunately, this time the Void Rays are going to be cut down by the combined forces of Team Bob. And definitely the team captain here with 124 supply. Now has more supply than both of his teammates combined. You know what really grinds my gears? The product... I, I shouldn't say it, but I will anyways, just to... For those out there. By the way, Jimmy, we forgot to sell out. This is Bronze League Heroes. We're back for the first time in a while. It's not because we don't want to do Bronze League Heroes. It's because there's so many good games out there. And if you want me to cast another series... What are we at, Jimmy? 1,000... 1,069? You're just making up numbers. You can't just... It, it's not funny. It wasn't funny the first 15 times. Was it? 1,069 likes. We'll cast another series. Maybe another Bronze League Heroes. Yes, nowadays Bronze League doesn't have quite the um, uh, raw feel to it. I have no idea if these players are truly Bronze League in team games. Nobody ever really knows. 
but it's about embracing the spirit of a Bronze League hero. And right now, the Terran players with their big robot back, get back, says Tuna, watching his teammate get obliterated by Thor's after he lost all his Void Rays and is now continuing to build an upgrade Void Rays. So I, I don't know, Tuna, if you're the strategic mastermind, but when you run out of units, that does free up a little bit of your attention to help help micro your, your teammates. But Bob with the Widow Mines and his own Thors has blasted Gravito back. The Widow Mines have held the line. But let's look at the macro of Team Tuna. Wow. Wow. The crescent of cannons. The bulwark of, of Depos. Um, and the and Gravito. Meanwhile, here come the Thors. Back and forth they go, almost like uh, creeps in a mobile. <laughs> Thor's blasting their way across. Any upgrades? Uh, one, one. The scans are somewhere. I, I can't be bothered. There are four Terran. Oh, we found it. Gravito's base. I don't know, though. Well, one or two cannons might not be enough to drive back the Dark Templar. Ten, ca ten cannons and a few shields. Yeah, that's better. It's better. All right. Well, well, well. Void rays, battle cruisers, and Thors. We're hitting all the marks here. On the other other side, Thors, Vikings, and what is? St oh my God! He's getting void rays and tempests. The box art units on both sides. Bob is right outside the front door. The scam comes out. Void Ray is going to try to swing around, go straight in towards the, uh, the Widow Mines, which could be dead. Uh, sc counter scan. There are three scans at a time. I got uh, more scan. Ah! It's out of hand. You should be able to add your own signature sound to the scan. She's dead. Hello there. <laughs> All right. The Void Ray is trying to come in, but without the help of his teammates, Bob is maxed out right now. Uh, and his teammates are bringing in some of the reinforcements just to solidify the position. DT is sliced through Gravito's Thors. Waiting for his moment. The, the Widow Mines will burrow. A lot of them gonna connect. The Void Ray is taking terrible, terrible damage with the Battle Cruiser sw swinging from the north. A few Yamato cannons went off. And where did the Thors go? The Battle Cruisers just wiping the field. 1 1 is complete. And the fleet was called in just in time. Oh, Zen War holds the line. Bob is thrown back. He's now lost 12,000 resources, including 18 Thors. Hidden Tuna, 29 Void Rays down. So, uh, the big loser so far, if you would. Both sides have continued his Stavaros with a couple exploratory tempests. We got plenty more turrets on the way. Some hot void ray on void ray action as they burn through. But the prismatics align a little bit stronger. Oh wait, here come Hey, no, there is a widow mine. Okay. Uh you gotta be a little careful. He fires the shot. And the widow mine softening things up. Even a defensive planetary for Bob here. In in large team games as well, even at the uh, less experienced level, there just aren't that many bases. Sure, there's a couple times as many bases as 1v1, your average 1v1 fam, but you really don't have that much time, especially with this many Terrans who do know what mules are. You really don't have that much time um, to uh, mine minerals. I know, it's oh my god. <laughs> Zedwar has plans, and then he has plans. Capital, underline, strike through, italicize, impact, font. There you go. Plans. The combined fleets of Team Tuna, which is mostly the battle cruisers with a few Void Ray escorts. Wait a second. Wait, oh, this is Gravito. We got Tempest. Thor versus Battle Cruiser Void Ray. Void Rays blasted out of the sky. Yamato and Prismatic Alignment more than enough. Some very optimistic probes in the center of the map. 
Battle cruisers gliding through another Stargate command over here. The fleet beacon for the Tempest. He's actually just targeting the Stargates, dealing with the source of the matter. Also, of course, melting the stalkers. Thor's blasting each other apart. Tempest with tectonic destabilizers for extra building damage. Void rays. Well, supporting it. It's hard to remember. All void rays look alike. Oh, carriers from Hidden Tuna as well. But the question on everyone's minds. What has Poco been doing? Poco. Oh, his attack up to the top right. He's at 162 supply, nearly equal to Zenwar at 170 still, with the battle cruisers working their way through. Poco blasting. Uh, there goes all those carefully laid plans of Zenwar. But he adds five more battle cruisers and three three to the production temp. The carriers may be able to hold the line. There's not so many battle cruisers. Whoa, the the complete the battle line of turrets. The TPM skyrockets and the skyrockets are building. But unfortunately, the battle cruisers will be here well before they're completed. At least if they maintain some focus, jumps back a single cruiser, such micro. Polko and Stavaros are blasting through. Stavaros, this is pretty much all he has. He's down to six probes in six tempests. He has nothing left to do out on the map. Doesn't, he's at 32 average APM and by God, he's gonna use it. The battle cruiser's still going to work for Zenwar. Even some, some medevacs here. For the Thors to be microed away, or maybe there were marines at some point. He's lost 50, okay, so at some point, yes, indeed, there were marines. That point is, oh. Battle cruisers jump away as Bob's Thors amble their way back. And are able to contest them. And it's still anybody's game right now. As the expansions to the top right and bottom right have been cleared out. The main base is nearly mined out. And the secondary expansions are looking dicey as well. Starting to dry up here. Thor's trying to annihilate the, the carriers, but the interceptor count is pretty overwhelming. I think there are enough Thor's left over. The armor is just too damn good, and with high impact mode, the carriers evaporate under the high impact Thor fire. The Thor count to the top right, though, has been whittled down. More Thors on the way, just, you know, in general, just assume that most of the Terrans are building Thors. It's a pretty safe assumption. Now, inspired to build Tempest is Hidden Tuna, realizing that that might have been a better move all along. As carriers are quite good right up until you deal with the biggest mech platform in the game. And there's a whole lot of them wandering around. At any point in this game, there's an average of like 20 Thors on the field. Who, who owns them? That's the harder part to keep track of. All right, the carriers have arrived, but Tempests are technically the, the, the hardest counter with the extra damage against massive air units. They're not focusing their fire quite so well as to prevent losing most of the Tempest here. Thors from Bomb Stri- No, wait, that's not an expansion. That's just a bunch of stalkers masquerading like an expansion on the minimap. Stavaro struggling, Hidden Tuna struggling, Ravito struggling. There are three out of four Terrans, though, who are still doing well. And are they going to press the issue? What's left? Where are the crew? Oh my god, he jumped on the Oh my, that's so many battle cruisers! Ah! <laughs> he has so many battle cruisers! Then war! That is 18 battle cruisers. There's no way all the Thors are going to be in the right place and right time to deal with this. Meanwhile, the rest of the Thors are going forward. Going for the base train scenario. Battle cruisers just uh, vomiting Yamato cannons at whatever they can get a hold of. The efficiency of the battle cruisers may very well end up being the deciding factor in this match. I. I think as we get started here, I am obligated once again to bring up that classic point to educate you on the basic fact. In order to win a game of StarCraft 2, no matter how many players, you must destroy all your opponent's buildings. All opponents. So, as we get closer and closer to that being a factor, as the 
The beautiful citrus colored Thors are somewhat bruised. How much money is in the bank? Poco and Bob have a bit. Stavaros has been mostly broke the entire game. Bob is very optimistic as to how he can expand his economy from here, building five more factories. I guess he has enough in the bank to kind of use them. But jumping back home, the battle cruisers, they'll calmly jump back to the main, but not on top of the Thors, realizing he doesn't have a full spread of Yamato cannons. They're only now coming back online. Unleashes the volley. The fusillade of Yamato cannons is blasting through the front line of the Thors. And Polko doesn't have all of them in high impact mode. And without the high impact mode, he doesn't have the impact he needs to actually kill the Thors. Zenwar is microing, which is a bit concerning, but eventually kills off the Thors and the Widowmines. Zenwar's battle cruisers will win the day. Everybody's under 100 supply. In fact, Team Bob has 100 supply in total. Zenwar is the only one with a real fighting army still on the map. 13 battle cruisers. Oh my god, nice red hidden tuna. Chimes in. What are you doing, Zenwar? Zenwar was trying to fly his command center to the corner, but then he realized the corner is where the enemy team's base is, and he has to fly away from the high sec auto tracking turrets. Poco says GG. Oh yeah, Hidden Tuna is still doing damage. But Bob, Bob is not done. He still has money in the bank. He's building double armory. Bob, you already have 3-3. Three, three. One armory will do it. You can never be too careful. It's just a reflex. Why can't you keep upgrading? All right, I got the money. Just keep slapping some armor plates on. Come on. <sighs> Unfortunately, regulations state that plus three is the most. Bob, I, I'm certain we'll be adding some more Thors. Right now, Team Tuna, off the back of Zenmore's fleet. Looks like they are in pole position. Of course, Polko, type GG, though is still fighting in the game, as is customary. Bob is building five Thors. There are still Widow Mines. They hit the cruisers. And at this point, Zenwar only has 48 minerals. He's looking to gather more, as you can tell by the command centers wandering out onto the map. The jump! Where did he jump? Oh, he found a base. Oh my god. Gravito, with nothing left on the map, is left with essentially back seating the battle cruisers, as is customary. We've been over there. Well, well, well. Poco has not rebuilt his base and is being revealed. Stavaros has left the game, which lo leaves his resources. Honestly, Poco should be sending Bob his resources right now. Bob is out of money, but he's still able to build Thors. It's actually like, this is not a, the, all the battle cruisers are bruised. He has a Raven? Sure, he might only have a, a slightly better than one action per second, but anti-armor missile. Oh my god, he gets it! Dorito dusting! Yamato can't encounter! Oh, the Yamatos are so much, though. The anti-armor is helping a lot, even with the missile turrets here. The battle cruiser count is dipping. He's down to eight. Oh, GG, says Bob. Bob's still in the game, by the way. Bob building five Thors at a time, a good misdirection. Poco has left the game. Bob, it's not, a po Bob actually has the most supply. <gasps> We gotta go to the... They see the base. They see the base. He sees the turrets. Bob is still fighting. Bob is... Team Bob was more accurate than I ever knew at the start. The incomes are... Mm, not great for anyone. A scan. Working on the Widowmines. Thors do outrange them. The scan runs out, unfortunately. Oh, no, Gravito! He has a Thor. He's like, what should I build? I have barely any money. But, ah, Thor. Of course. Bob is still mining. And technically, Stavaros' uh, workers are sending him money as well. Bob is quietly building the strongest army on the map yet again. All the mech units are 3-3 upgraded. The battle cruisers have not been repaired for Zen War. How many? He has 21 SCVs. So it's not over yet. 
not a, like, caster, it's not over, but this is still very much an opportunity for Bob here. Unfortunately, he's losing his orbital. Stavaros is a simulator kind of in the way the battlecruiser will help out. Oh, but he gets one of the cruisers. Down to seven. Oh, six. And back at home. What is Zenwar even building? They lost. He lost all of his production. He has to start from the beginning. Zenwar doesn't even have a barracks. He's down. He just is like, ah. He's cut down to the stump of the tech tree. Hidden tuna still has some tempest and a single carrier. Though barely the money with which to fund it. How many? He's down to 11. He has less probes than he started with, which is not ideal. Here come the Tempest. The problem for Bob is the constant pressure here. Oh no. Down goes another command center. Does he have enough for more? He has one command center left. Oh, wait. That They can't... Uh. Bob has to know. Though he may not. It's, it's, uh, it's anyone's guess here. He knows that he's on the clock. There are still plenty of minerals in the map, though I'm not sure that's factoring in. All right, we're getting we're getting tech labs. We're getting we're getting tech labs over here. Says Zenwar. Oh, but the Tempest wants to so much damage. Oh my God, he's got 15 Thors, and he's coming back. Yes, there's a. He, it's now one teammate instead of three. Yes, it has. He's down to barely any mining or barely any economy. Yes, he's up against teleporting units in the form of recall and tactical jump. Yes, but Bob has lived. His teammates couldn't handle the heat, but he withstood the fire. And it forged him through a crucible, through all the fire and fury of the constant counter harassment, the constant drops. He has the Thors. And with them, he will hammer his point home. The Tempests are chewing through the turrets, dealing with that static de defense as they're designed to. A couple more Thors will pop out. Unfortunately, rally to cross as Bob is high. Can we go to the Bob action camp? Here we are. Bob, supply block, tried to build more Thors, realizing it's all coming apart. So we find the economy. Doing a lot of Thor micro. Thor is not well known as a micro intensive unit, but here we are. He knows there's something going on up there. He just doesn't know what. Another Thor. Factories falling apart. Just, just destabilized by the Tempest. The Thors are doing their best. Oh, the Marauders from Zen War, but not even... Uh, unupgraded Marauders are not gonna... Okay, he has one one. He actually did upgrade. He's floating to the... Oh, no. You son of a... The Battlecruisers, they're actually going for the base trade. They won't face Bob's Thor-based army. They're running. Well, flying, but... Bob... He still has money, and while he does, he can rebuild. But does he have any ES1 SCV? <gasps> he has enough to rebuild a command center. That's the army is 17 Thors. And one, as he rebuilds it, I assume before, has not rebuilt their base and is being revealed, came up. We don't know the timer. But they don't see it. They don't know where it is. It's at Bob realizing at the last moment. Oh my god, the Thors are just blasting through the Tempest. I'm using the word blasting a lot. But I don't know how else to describe it. As those Thor cannons are hammering the point home. Hidden Tuna. The last player mining for Team Tuna. Gravito is being revealed. He has money. Does he have any SCVs? Yes. So he can rebuild. 
Gravito is rebuilt. Shield battery overcharge for him tuna. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's a cool tuna. Oh wait, he does still have a nexus. He can still mine minerals. Including the 55 back at his base. Oh no! Oh no! Oh! The probes driven from their nexus! We'll find the load! No! Not like this! Get in the command center! Load that! The last command center has lifted. That's it. That's the only building. Where are the battle cruisers? The Thors are coming back! Is there a tactical jump? Wait, he jumped! He jumped to the back right corner. He doesn't have jump. Bob, Bob is running. Bob, get over there. Come on, the pro. I can't believe that's that's so unfortunate. Bob has fought so hard for so long. He's lost 58 Thors. That's more Thors than you'll see an entire season. The battle cruisers are scary because they don't know 100%. He wasn't being revealed. It's not guaranteed this is his last building. He can't land and build SCVs either. He is supply blocked at 78 over 15. So unless he somehow loses all but like two Thors, he will never be able to rebuild again. He must escort. It is not impossible at this stage for Bob to win. But the scenario in which he wins is incredibly difficult to uh, imagine. The command center, that a, a draw is marginally more likely. As Bob may very well, well, we will see. The command center is on its own. There are no eyes on it. There's multiple, Zen War is microing his command centers into the corner. This man has base traded with battle cruisers before. The jump back to the main. The battle cruisers are looking to engage the Thors. The Thors are, are doing whatever they can. The battle cruisers have already lined up their Yamato cannons, but there's not enough of them. They're getting beaten apart. Wait, he's losing so many. No, go after the CC, says Tuna. Who once again has lost all his units, so has hopped into the back seat. Last Bildong. But now there's not enough battle cruisers to reliably kill it. <laughs> oh no. The command center, oh, they don't know where the command center is. It's bruised, but not beaten. The Thors. <sighs> How has it come to this? The box art units battling it out. They're looking. The pings from Hidden Tuna. But the Hidden Command Center is more accurate. Gravito is still mining. He's building Marines. I think the chances of a draw just went up dramatically as right now well it's it, they went from like eight percent to like twelve percent so that's a fifty percent increase the numbers don't lie and they damn thors are guarding it they found it we can't win all right tuna that's this is the uh tuna 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 I mean, Tuna has, he's mining. They're not thinking long-term here. Bob has been thinking mid-term throughout this entire game. He hasn't thought too far ahead, but he definitely has had enough foresight to keep this command center alive. Oh my God, the Thor's blasting things. There's nothing left to repair them. Oh no, not widow mines. Oh, a cheap move, I say. They're light on the minerals, but also morals, as we all know widow mines are. There is no hope of detection. He's going for drilling claws, which is, you know, not really necessary, but. <laughs> Bob, it's a valiant fight, but. If he can kill every single worker on the ground, it's still going to be. If he could kill so much resistance that he gets down to only two Thors, he can rebuild. But unfortunately, he just doesn't have any SCVs. He's abandoning the command center. He knows. He knows. There, there's no way to stop the mines. Oh no, he's not even on a move. 
There is no detection. He's going for the command center. He's just getting the- if he gets the armory. That is one way to reveal the mine. Is that the only armory? Yes. The Thor- uh, He gets it. Once again, Zenwar is forced into the corner. For not the first time in this game, we see workers. As long as they aren't forced into the- They haven't seen the command center for a while. They don't know where it is. Bob is still rampaging throughout the map with his Thors. The entire unit count left countering Bob is three battle cruisers, three zealots, and a widow mine. Another mine fires. Zenwar is stuck in the corner, tucking his SCVs into his command center. The battle cruisers, with less than two battle cruisers of health between all three of them. That's still enough to take out. Does Bob have building armor? He does not. Which is not usually the most relevant thing, but when it comes to battlecruisers potentially sniping off the last command center, it suddenly becomes significantly more relevant. It's a pretty cool little place here in the map. Bob is actually trying to split. <gasps> they found it! They found the command center! There's nothing nearby! The, the Viking can land! Gravito! Oh, the battlecruisers jump! No! The Yamato! Oh no! It burns! Gee! Gee! Tuna! With his hyped commentary, the epic struggle of Bob finally ends. He tried. He, with the tools he had left, he gave it one of the best efforts. Honestly, especially for, for the less experienced level of play. One of the best efforts at, at making the best of that particularly difficult situation. With no teammates left, he takes it on himself, and the game ends, despite his thoughts. Team Tuna, with their slippery battlecruisers and carriers, a hard-fought effort, a great battle, something I think worth watching. Something I hope made your day a little bit better. Something worth getting 1,069... 69 likes. Something worth bronze league heroes. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Stay chill.